Okay, for part two, we're going to do hypothesis testing from you, but this time we're going to use uh, small samples, which we defined as to be less than 30. This is going to be our same rules of when we use, um, of what we're going to do essentially when we did confidence intervals for small samples. Same assumptions, same, well, it's the same math. So our conditions. Since we have a small sample, we know the central limit theorem does not apply because the central limit theorem only applies to large samples. So we must assume or we must know that the population is normal. Um, also, if sigma is unknown, which is of course usually the case, we're going to have to use S as an approximation. Um, but remember, it's not that great of an approximation if we have small samples. So we have to use the T distribution instead of the Z. Okay, um, remember about the T distribution. So again, for all of this section, we're going to be using the T distribution because we have a small sample and we're really never going to know sigma. It's just not going to happen in practice. So about the T distribution, if you recall from before, um, we have to, in order for us to use the T table, we have to know the degrees of freedom. And degrees of freedom is just your sample size minus one. So that's the line you're going to use. Um, the unfortunate thing is that you're not going to be able to use the alpha and p value approach for t distributions unless you're using a calculator or stack crunch or some statistical software. In other words, we can't get p values from the tables. It's a little bit unfortunate that we can't, but it's just there's just not enough information on the t table for us to be able to really calculate a p value. So you have to use the rejection of region approach here unless you're using technology. Um, so lastly, um, some of our symbols have changed. Basically, all the Z's from before are now T's. So our critical values are T alpha or T alpha over 2 for doing a two-tailed test. And um, our test statistics are going to be the exact same formula, except that we're going to use T instead of Z. So it's going to be T equals um, X bar minus mu naught over S over square root of N um, instead of Z equaling that really very little difference. The only major difference is we're using a different table. Okay, um, so suppose that the claim is that the average number, and again I'm making this up, that the average number of M&M candies in a fun size bag of M&Ms is 17. In a sample of 15 bags, the average was 16.7 and the standard deviation was 0.9. So on average of those 15 bags, there was only 16.7 M&Ms. Um, per bag. Now obviously you can't have 16.7 M&Ms in a bag, but this is an average, so that's okay. We want to test this claim at an alpha of 0.01, 1%, a 1% threshold, or a 1% um, significance level. So let's assume the distribution of M&Ms in a fun size bag is normal. Again, we have to make that assumption in order to continue with these small samples. For step one, we're going to write HO and HA. HO is that the true mean is equal to 17, and since they didn't specify what HA is, um, which way we want to test, it's implied that we're dealing with a two-tailed test. We're just trying to disprove the claim. So we can do it either way, more than 17 or less than. So not equal to is what we have to do. So we're going to draw our two-tailed uh, distribution here. So it's going to look something like this. And... Um, we have to use the rejection region. So again, these blue lines are rejection regions. And remember the areas here, since it's split in two, our alpha value is 1%. So half a percent, would, or 0 0.005, would have to be in each tail. It's not super important we calculate that, but actually we kind of have to if we're going to use the table. Okay, so um, we need to find these numbers from the table. But in order for us to use the table, not only do we have to know what the area in the tail is. And again, you only need to divide by two if you're doing a two-tailed test here. So we just need to know the area in the tail that we're concerned about. And we need to know degrees of freedom to know which line to use. So our sample size, remember, was 15. So our degrees of freedom would be 14, just our sample size minus one. We're going to find our T alpha over two values. Um, and remember, it's not the t that we're dividing by 2, it's the alpha that we're dividing by 2. So we're going to find um, a test, um, our critical value, rather, um, on both sides. So it's going to be plus or minus. Um, bringing up our t-table, our rather, 
our um, area, remember, was 0 0.005, and our degrees of freedom was 14. So our tested, our uh, sorry, our critical value is 2.977. So we're going to do that on both sides since it's a two-tailed test. And there we go. Um, our our t alpha over twos are 2.99, sorry, 2.977 and negative 2.977. So it's establishing our rejection region. Now we need to calculate our test statistic. This is really the exact same procedure we did in section 6.3. So to calculate our test statistic, um, we're going to do, we write t equals instead of z equals, but this is really just, even though we can call this a t-score, it's really just our z-score from before. Okay, um, plugging in our numbers, we get 16.7, our sample average, minus 17 divided by 0.9 over square root of 15, which gives us approximately 1.291. I decided to take this to three decimal places just because the t-table goes to three decimal places, but you don't really have to. So our t is going to be somewhere over here. Um, it would help if I, oh, that should have been negative 1.29. I just forgot the negative sign. That's why. All right, so this should be negative. Let's see if I can get my marker and fix this. So this should be negative. This should be negative. I apologize for that because I put it on the correct side. All right, so um, our t is negative, so it's going to be somewhere over here. Um, but it doesn't really matter because what we're looking for here is does it fall in the rejection region? And the answer is no, it doesn't. It falls in between our two sides of our rejection region. It falls over here, not in that shaded area. So therefore, what's our conclusion? It doesn't fall in the rejection region, so we're going to fail to reject HO. Um, I just like to say FTR HO for short. Okay, let's continue.